Okay. Yeah, Ernie. Ernie's used to this a lot more than I am. I can I can lead singing, and it doesn't. It's not intimidating or anything. But uh, I praise the Lord that uh, the pastor has confidence in me that I'm able to give out the word of God to his people, and not scare them off. Uh huh. <laughs> and teaching Sunday school, I, I get all excited about teaching Sunday school, but it's different when I'm up here. It just feels a little more. You got to feel like you have a little more responsibility, right, preacher? Uh, like a little more heavier weight to put upon you. But uh, I studied, uh, I prayed, and I had others pray for me. And tonight's lesson, if it were to be titled, I don't title my messages, but if you want to title it, I just say, Till Shiloh Come. Uh, three, just Till Shiloh Come. Uh, it, it's something, it's a little different not a little, it's a lot different approach to the Christmas story that you probably never heard before. Um, and I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, it's going to be from the text of Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49, if you want to read with me. I'm going to start in verse 8. Genesis chapter 49. Verse 8, and I'm going to read through verse 12. <clears throat> the Bible says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Let me back up on there. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Let's pray. Lord God, I'm here tonight to give out your word, to try and be a blessing to your people, that your, uh, that your word go forth into their hearts, uh, that they would receive it and be stronger in the Lord tonight. And may they hear something possibly that they've not heard before, but Lord, let your Holy Spirit move upon this, throughout this uh, sanctuary, throughout this building, and work in the hearts of your people tonight. I pray that you'll help me to speak the words that, I, that you want me to speak and go no farther, but yet not lack in something that you want your people to hear. We ask you to be with our pastor and his wife tonight and uh, the birth mother of the baby that they're going to adopt uh, work everything out to your honor, in your glory. And they're waiting on you, and they're patiently, they're patiently waiting um, for the arrival of this newborn baby. And we ask you, Lord, to bless in a mighty, mighty way. And as, he's, uh, as our uh, pastor is away, uh, continue to strengthen your saints here at Charity Baptist Church and to save the lost as we go about preaching the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, a little bit about the word Shiloh. Uh, it's in the Hebrew, whatever, it's called Shiloh, uh, which is from the word Shalah or Shalav. And it's, uh, the, what it means is to be secure, to be tranquil, um, to be at peace. How many of you need some tranquility and some peace and security? 2020 has not been peaceful or secure or tranquil. It's been topsy turvy, upside down, roller coaster, and everything. Um, we've, Shelly and I have had our uh, testimony. We've given our testimony a few times. Started in January with our kids going back to college and having that accident, and it's just been roller coaster ever since. Uh, but there are some great times. Uh, wonderful things happened in 2020, but uh, we need tranquility. And so the word Shiloh means tranquility. What, what uh, Jacob is doing 
it's coming in to the end of his life. And he's given his blessing to all his children. Now, Judah is not the firstborn. Who's the firstborn of Jacob? Where is he? Who's the firstborn of Jacob? I'm looking right at him. Reuben. Reuben, that's right. But Reuben did not get the blessing of the first, the birthright as far as being the leader of the, uh, the family. Uh, how about Levi and Simeon? No, they weren't given the, 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 the right hand of the, the power of the family, you know, because they, well, they did not do well as far as taking vengeance on their sister. But Judah, the fourth, born, the fourth son, he got the, the power. It says, um, he are, Judah, thou art he whom thy pr brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So uh, Judah is going to be the leader of the, of the uh, nation of Israel. Now when they were leaving, you know, 400 some years later, they were leaving Egypt. Uh, and once they got the tribes organized and the temple built, who went out before all the other tribes? Judah. Judah led the whole nation when they were moving from one place to another. Judah was the leader. And he said, um, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back up. First, who is Shiloh? Okay, who is Shiloh? Well, that's a good question. Um, Ezekiel talks about him. And in Ezekiel, if you want to write down the verses, chapter 21, verse 27, in the book of Ezekiel it says this, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. It's the right of the diadem and the crown and the priesthood. It's going to be this Shiloh, uh, this man who's going to rule over all. And then Zechariah talks about it. Um, says, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So, this, when he said that Judah is going to have the scepter, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And when Shiloh comes, it's going to be this branch who will grow up, and he shall build the temple. Uh, he'll be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So he's going, he's going to build the temple of the Lord, and we know that, the, that Christ built the church. And so the temple of the Lord in this case is the church. So Christ is the branch, and Shiloh is going to be this branch. And Shiloh is like an epithet or a, uh, a precursor name of Messiah. And Shiloh, the word Shiloh, is found many times in the Bible. But it's found as a town. But this Shiloh, you have to go back in the... I'm not, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. You go back to the Hebrew, it's got a different spelling and di for Shiloh the town and different spelling for Shiloh the person. So it's, uh, if you get confused about that, and if you look it up and say there's two different Shilohs, how can it be the town and a person? It's, 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 you lose the interpretation there. Um, now, who is Shiloh? Well, he's, he's, first of all, he's to come from Judah. All right? He has to come from Judah. Jacob said that. Um, and he's not the firstborn, but will he be the praise of his brethren? He's compared to a lion, um, a lion's whelp. Now, a lion's whelp. Do you anybody know, does anybody know what a whelp is? W-H-E-L-P. That's a baby. Yeah, a little, a little tiny baby. Um, and so a little tiny baby, he's not going to go out and catch any prey right away, right? He's going to watch mom do it first, okay? Because the lionesses are the ones that go do the hunting. And where's, the, where's the, the lion, the old lion? He's couched back down, you know? It's like, 
But who shall rouse him up, he says. What are you, what are you going to do? What's going to happen if you rouse up a sleeping lion? He's going he's to hunt you. He, you, don't mess, you don't rouse up a lion. And Judah, wrote, he's a lion's whelp. He's small in power, but he's going to raise to power. And he's going to get to the point where he will do what he wants to do. And you will do what he says to do. Did not that happen in, in Israel? He started out small, but then Israel became a huge nation. And all the kings in Judah, which is uh, even after the kingdom split, the northern kingdom didn't have Judah uh, as king. And they, for, they, they, they lost, okay? Um, but Judah, there still remained a king up until the captivity. So that came true as well. Um, now, uh, from Judah came the kings and then started small. Uh, now, Judah is to be dreaded and feared, though he may seem to slumber. You rouse him up and bring calamity upon himself. Now, Judah's kingdom was to be sovereign until the kingdom of Christ would come, which is Shiloh. The name Shiloh was mysterious. They thought, okay, what all? Peace? Tranquility? Hmm. Wonder when that's going to come. And it was something they thought about for a long, long time. Something to consider because they'd never heard that before and they never, ne they never heard it afterwards. Now, how did Jacob know about this name Shiloh? Why was it never used in our com in general conversation? So it made people ponder at it and perhaps may be able to understand fully when it was revealed to all of creation. And uh, people th still think Christ is a mystery yet today because the church being failed as not going out and preaching the gospel and letting people understand. All these other uh, doctrines have come in and confused everybody. So Christ is still a mystery yet today, unfortunately. Now, when, when Christ was upon the earth, there were no kings from Judah on the throne. And ten tribes were gone, and the others were all absorbed into Judah, which is, at that time, Judea. Um, now, unto him shall Shiloh shall the gathering of the people be. So the only gathering they had up until Christ came was there in Judea. And what in Samaria was the mult, mixed multitudes from the Syrian captivity, and they placed people there and there, and people intermingled, and it was just a mess. And so that's why people didn't like, that's why the Jews didn't like Samaritans, because they were, they were, well, uh, uh, mutts. <laughs> They're like, but I like mutts, okay? They're cheaper. And uh, <laughs> you don't have to take, they don't care, take as much care. But uh, there are a lot of Gentile influence, so they were considered dogs. And that's why people went all around Samaria. But what did Christ do? He went through Samaria because he knew who they worshipped and they knew that, he knew that they needed him. Um, and he wanted to gather them unto his own too. Um, and in, in Numbers 24, it speaks about this Shiloh. But see, when, when I'm saying if it speaks of this Shiloh, it's not Shiloh by name. It says, He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Um, I'm wondering why I put that. That must have been another study. Never mind. Um, now, uh, where? Okay, now who is Shiloh? We, just, we, we demonstrate who he was. Uh, where will he come from? Where will he come from? Well, oh, it's Numbers 24, 17. 24, 17, that's what it is. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star, capitalized, out of Jacob, and a scepter, capitalized, shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. So the star out of Jacob, and the scepter shall rise out of Israel. That, they are capitalized, and that is he who is going to be king above Agog or Agag and uh, will smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth, wherever Sheth is. I didn't research every single detail. But he is going to be the 
his kingdom be exalted and he will be the king of even Moab and this Sheth. He will destroy the wickedness and he will exalt uh, the, uh, the believers. And so he's going to be a star out of Jacob and that, that scepter shall rise. In Psalm 2, David even wrote about him in Psalm 2. And uh, speaking, Yet have I set my king upon mine holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. So when Christ was here, God called him my begotten son. And when Christ was baptized, This is my beloved son, uh, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And then the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, once again, he declared that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So if you hear any doctrine that says that Jesus is not the Son of God, turn away or correct them. But don't argue, don't debate. Let the Lord work, on, work that out. And it, um, all through uh, the Old Testament, and uh, prophes uh, the prophets, Isaiah 9, 7, um, of the increase of his government... And peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So he's giving, he is establishing, this is just, this is before, the, during the captivity and coming up to the captivity, he's warning Israel, no matter what you do, I'm still going to bring this Shiloh. I'm still going to bring the branch and I'm still going to bring uh, this ruler who will have his kingdom established forever. And it will be from the throne of David. And David is from the tribe of Judah. So when, when who was the first king of, of Israel? Saul. Saul. What tribe was he from? So in, if, 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 when uh, Israel is choosing a king, why did they choose somebody that had no place, that they knew that the king had to be from Judah? Did they not realize that it wasn't going to last? They didn't realize. So God said, okay, fine. It's, that's not my choice. But they didn't even choose from the right tribe. And that's why Saul did not last. It's not just because he was a bad king. He just wasn't from the right tribe to begin with. Do we make bad choices? Yep, yep. So, folks, people are not getting any better. <laughs> no matter what people say, we're not getting any better. Um, Jeremiah speaks of him. Uh, about, again, about being from Judah. God wants people to, wanted his nation to know for sure that it's got to be from Judah. And it's not, if, if it, and Christ said, there are going to be many other Christs come. And they were going to say, I'm the Christ, follow me. Or he, I found him, he's out in the wilderness. But if he's not from Judah, it's not, the, it's not Shiloh. It's not the one that God's sending. Jeremiah 23, 5 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, not man, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, capitalized, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children out of Israel, or children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries, whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And verse 8, the gathering together of his people. What's Shiloh supposed to do? Gather the people unto himself. And Christ said, when, when he was talking about his death, if I be lifted up, I shall gather all men unto me. Shiloh is the one to gather all men unto him. And then Micah 5, 2, a very, very familiar verse. All these tabs here. Micah 5, 2 says, But thou, because the question is, where will he come from? Uh, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, 
Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So he's going to be from Bethlehem. But was Jesus from Bethlehem? No, he was born in Bethlehem, but where was he from? No, when, when, he, when he was born, where was he born? Where, where was his family from? John, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Where's Nath Can any good thing come out of Galilee? No. So if he's from Galilee, he can't be the king. He can't be the king because his family's from Galilee. But the Bible says he's going to be born in Bethlehem. So they missed it, didn't they? Um, he's going to bring together the remnant. Now, for a nation being ruled, again, by a heathen nation, they ruled many, many times. After the captivity, they were ruled by this heathen nation, that heathen nation, this, that, and now they're on the Roman, um, uh, na uh, the Roman rule. Now, this was someone to look forward to, you know. When you're in captivity, you're looking forward to a deliverer, right? Um, the days of the judgment, the, the judges, what, what, what caused them to be in captivity in the judges? Sin. What's the, what, those of you that were in mine and pastor's Sunday school classes, the four S's in the book of Judges. Sin, servitude, supplication, salvation. Well, we need to review the judges. But here's, here's what... Um, when they were uh, in Jesus' time, they were in sin, so God let them be capt taken captive uh, uh, in the time of the kings. Um, taken captive by Babylon and Syria. And then it just kept going on and on and on, on. And they were under servitude and then they, and under supplication because there were many people waiting, many people praying for the deliverer. And then there's salvation. And that is how we get saved, isn't it? We sin, and then we serve sin, and then we cry unto God, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall save me from the body of this death? And then salvation comes, because we hear, we believe, and we receive the gift. And this, God said, okay, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. And this time was come. But did it come like they said? Well, how shall he come? Is the next question. How shall he come? What will be a sign? Well, Isaiah gave him a sign. Or, or God gave him a sign and told Isaiah to tell him this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Anybody that tells you that Jesus was a girl is blasphemy. His son is given. You can't have a woman king. It's a son He's going to be the king. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's going to be born as a human, okay? This Shiloh, this Deliverer, this King whose throne is going to be established forever, who was began forever in the past, is going to be born as a human. Wait a minute. Human? Everlasting Father? Mighty God? Something just sounds odd. How can you be human and be Almighty Father? That's God. How can you be the boat? That just doesn't sound right, does it? Something's odd here. That's the mystery. Shiloh is a mystery. How can this be? Well... Um, the Prince of Peace, the name Prince of Peace. Shiloh means tranquility, peace. So it's coming together. You see it coming together? I hope so. Isaiah 7 here, it says, Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name, here it is, Emmanuel. God with us. That's how the mystery is solved. It's going to be God with us. 
They had seen Christophanies before. Abraham saw God in flesh, but didn't recognize him. He recognized him as Lord, but he wasn't in his all glory. And there were other times where they saw it that way. So I, he told Isaiah to tell everybody, it's going to be God with us. That's how it can be a human, a God in a human form. And Jeremiah 31, uh, boy, to be, to have these messages from God and to be able to write them down in Scripture, man, what a privilege. And it's forever settled in heaven. So th these guys writing this stuff about the Messiah, they get the credit for all eternity. Isn't that something? Jeremiah 31, 22 says this. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A new thing. How can there be anything new? It says, A woman shall compass a man. Now that a man is not amen. It's a man. It, in the Hebrew, I looked that up too because I was like, how does that have to do with a, uh, a deity? A woman shall compass a man, shall envelop a man. Well, I've, I've heard some preachers say that it's a, a woman becoming pregnant without the agency of a man. Well, that's part of it. But the other one is, if you look it back, it's, it's the word G-E-B-E-R, I believe it is. I, got it, I thought I read it down here. Um, G-E-B-E-R. Her child will be that. And it is, in Isaiah 9, 6, he is El Jibor, the mighty God. So just a man, the, a woman shall compass a man. In English, it doesn't really mean anything. But if you look back and, and look and study on the words, which I don't do very often until it has confusion there, um, you look back and the a man is Gebar, Geber, I don't know how you pronounce it, okay? I'm, I'm a Gentile, so I don't have to pronounce them right. It's all, the mighty God. She is going to, the mighty God is going to be within this woman. That's the new sign. I'm going to bring a new thing upon the earth. Now, how can that be? That's God. He spoke the world into existence by the word of his mouth. And he brought all kinds of miracles upon Israel and upon the earth. He can do this new thing, and it's nothing to him, nothing to him. So this woman, it's going to be a virgin. She's going to be conceived without, having, without the agency of man, and the mighty God is going to be within her. Oh, boy, that's kind of mind-boggling, isn't it? That is a mystery. How can this be? Emmanuel, God with us. What is going on here? Well, when shall it come? All this, you know, you got how who is he? When, where, you know, where's it going to happen? Now, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? We're going to, ha how long do we have to wait? Well, um, we, the pastor's been going through the book of Daniel, and he's only got one more chapter to go, and uh, chapter 9 explains a little bit of about it. I'm still not 100% uh, uh, fluent on how this, how this is, but Daniel chapter 9 is the only place we found that has a timeline of when it's going to happen. And it starts in verse 25, and it says this, Know therefore and understand. Okay? Know therefore and understand. <clears throat> I'm still trying to understand this. Their math is different from ours. That from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, Shiloh, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, until then shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. And there's a colon there. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. And then, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall, <clears throat> that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So, you have seven weeks from the, the commandment to restore, uh, to restore or build Jerusalem unto the Messiah. Shall be seven weeks, comma, 
and three score in two weeks, 62 weeks. Okay, now we don't know exactly which commandment. Um, in, uh, <clears throat> in Ezra, which is 536 uh, years before Christ, the command was made. So he said, all right, anybody that wants to go build Jerusalem uh, or build the temple of the Lord, your God, the, your God of Israel, stand up and go and we'll give you whatever you need to get over there. All right, that was five, 536 B.C. I don't know how seven weeks, even in seven, seven years of seven weeks, that's 49 years. I don't know how that math works. But they had their own way, and then the 62 weeks. But here's the thing. The math is not the issue. The issue is they had a time frame to look for. Okay, they knew when they had, and there's also, part, correct me if I'm wrong, preacher, three different commands to go. Because there's Ezra, there's Nehemiah, and Zerubbabel, right? Or are there just the two? Because it could be the temple, and then there's the walls. So, we, it, it, there is different opinions on which commandment to go. But the, the fact of the matter is, they knew which one they were, what Daniel was talking about. And, but then, what time we're going to know? Okay, when is the time to stop that? Well, Zechariah talks about the, the triumphal entry, and that is when the clock stops. Um, one of the clocks, I believe, stops. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. This is Zechariah 9.9. 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king, capitalized, cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Genesis 49, Jacob said, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. So, Zechariah agreed with that as far as his lowliness. He wasn't going to be in a big entourage riding elephants and camels in a big huge parade. He was low, meek and lowly in heart. And that was the time. But they knew. Some, they, they had this time to where the starting time and when that time had elapsed that they know how to figure it, that's when they should look for him. That's when they should look for him. Now, uh, Justin preached on Wednesday night about the, the wise men. Um, about how what they did and their, their, the importance of their gifts and stuff like that, but uh, we we had a little discussion and you can believe you can uh, agree with agree or disagree or whatever. Uh, we think, some of us seem to think that they were Jewish because otherwise they really wouldn't have cared what the scripture said about the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Shiloh, and in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. You know, he had like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. They raised them up in the Chaldean ways and the Chaldean language and placed them in different provinces to rule, right? Well, some of us believe that these are descendants, these wise men that came to visit uh, the baby were descendants of the people that were placed in those provinces somewhere out east of that particular kingdom. And they somehow got a hold. They were affluent, okay, and they got a hold of Daniel's writings to have that time frame. And in the Chaldeans, they were astronomers and astrologers. They watched the heavens. They knew. And God put, placed the stars in the sky for what purpose? For signs and for seasons. They knew the different stars. And what is going to happen December 21st in the, first in the skies today, or this, this month? And it's, what is it called? It's called the Christmas star. It's dubbed the Christmas star because it's brighter than all the other stars. And so um, uh, I watched a PBS special a few years ago that explained how somebody out east could have seen a difference in the stars and were able to follow it all the way to Israel. And it was, it's a phenomenal thing, but I, have, I wasn't able to figure out how to get a copy of that and I can't find, still can't find it. So I'm wondering if the devil got in there and erased all that and erased it from everybody's mind and said you can't get it. Because it was fascinating. 
how that somebody who knows the stars and the technologies we have today, they, they see stars that are millions of miles away. And if you, can just, if you can see them millions of miles away, they would know the difference in the stars above. So we believe that those guys were watching the stars and they saw something different. And they, they recalled, this is about the time. That must be a sign from God. A star out of Judah? I wonder if that's a star that he's talking about. Let's see if it lasts. See how long it lasts. It's over in the direction of Israel. That's got to be it, guys. That's got to be it. And they gather everything and go together. And guess what? It was him. It was him. And when they saw the star, when they got done with talking with Herod, and they saw the star, they were exceedingly joyful. They, they read the heavens right. The prophecies were correct. And rejoiced greatly. So, this Shiloh. All right. Um, the point is, they had... Okay, um, so, why will he come? Why will Shiloh come? And that's... Jacob told us why. <clears throat> it says... Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. He's to gather the people together. Because at the time that Jesus came, they were scattered throughout the whole world. And he, was, he came to seek that and to save that which was lost. And to establish his reign. All right? God did not rule in the people's hearts at this time. When, the, when Jesus came, they were so lost in sin. They were doing their own thing. Uh, they uh, spoke praises unto God, but he was not near to their hearts. In their hearts, they were dark and they were wicked. And Isaiah 61 um, speaks a little bit more about that. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So he's, why did he come? To preach the gospel. To the meek. Because the high and mighty will not receive it. But the meek and lowly will. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Does the world fix your heart, broken heart? No. They medicate it. God mends the broken hearted. And, he's, and then, to proclaim liberty to the captives. We are captive to sin, death, and the grave. But Jesus sets us free for all eternity and puts us on a solid rock and to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, bound in sin. And then you bind yourself to Christ. In our Sunday school class, you can either dead to sin and alive to God or you can be bound to sin and away from God. He's going to Break those binds, uh, break those bounds to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, not to medicate, but to comfort for real. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That's why he came, folks. And did, not, did Jesus not do that? So, what does this all have to do with Christmas? Everything. Shiloh has come, folks, just as he said he would. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. That's 
what Shiloh has to do with Christmas. He came for us because we were bound in sin and misery and mourning and we needed a Savior. And that's why He's here. Israel knew He would come, but either they didn't believe or they didn't want to believe how He would come the way He did. His beginning was so meek and so lonely. Who would expect that kind of stuff from a king? A deliverer? God incarnate? But His kingdom was not an earthly kingdom. For earthly kingdoms fail. And they fail and they fail and fail again. But not His kingdom. His kingdom is forever. Gathering of his, his gathering of His people would be the building of the church. And his people were in bondage of sin and of idolatry. Mouths speaking praise, but hearts were far from God. He came to bring newness of life to the spiritually dead. And Matthew gives the lineage of Jesus, and then through Joseph, and then Luke gives the lineage of Jesus through Mary's dad. Both of them go to Judah. So Jesus cannot be denied that he came from the tribe of Judah. Both families, all right? Joseph was not his natural father, but in, in Israel, he was considered the father, father figure, okay? God was his father, but they didn't want to believe that. Now, he was indeed of the tribe of Judah. Now, the lion, uh, uh, Jacob speaks about the lion, well, Jesus in Revelation is the lion from the tribe of Judah. Though he was meek, um, but uh, before a lion, he was a lion's whelp. He needed to grow in strat stature and in wisdom and in favor with both God and man. Even Jesus had to do that in order to, be, to grow up. Now, uh, he was also in the Revelation called... The, lion, uh, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. So how can you be a lion and a lamb? That's God. Because when, when Shiloh came, he didn't come, come to conquer. He didn't come. He came to comfort. He came to, to bind the brokenhearted. He came to serve. Not to be served as a king. He came to serve. Now this Shiloh is Jesus. and Israel missed it. Now, wise men, they saw the star and knew the time had come. And they sought after the king. Wise men still seek after the king today. And the shepherds, they were given the announcement and went to see what the Lord had made known unto them. Christ the Savior is born! Christ the Savior is born! Glory to God in the highest and on earth, Shiloh. Peace, goodwill to men. Shiloh, tranquility, peace, joy, gathering together. Shiloh, wonderful, wonderful. But 30 years, after, 30 years later, Messiah shall be cut off. He will be buried, and on the third day, he'll rise up and never die again. Why did he come? To save you and me. We're sinners who fall short of the glory of God. We've sinned against the holy God who will not let our actions be, go unpunished. Wages of sin, that's death and separation from God. Shiloh came to rule and to reign in our hearts. He came to die in our place. He paid the price for our sin. And his gift to us is eternal life. In order for you to have that gift is to believe and receive. Shiloh will come again. But it won't be as a lamb this time. It will be as a lion. It will to, be deliver, to deliver justice. He will gather his people together. And those left behind will get their just due. He will deliver justice. Now, will be, you be on his side or will you be his adversary? That choice he has given up to you. Let's pray. Lord God, our Father, we thank you so much for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We thank you for your unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ, your begotten Son, your only begotten Son, who came meek and lowly, but for the purpose to die for our sins. Shiloh, peace, goodwill, tranquility, the gathering of His people. Lord, gather us together today. Um, as you, as, uh, if you tarry 
in bringing your church uh, home to you, we ask you that we may be found faithful. Lord, if there's anybody here tonight who does not understand salvation, does not know what it means to be saved, Lord, work on their hearts. They may consider the salvation that was so freely given. Christ came that they may that, that for those to believe and have eternal life. He came to pay the debt of man's sin because he loved us so much. And we ask you, Lord, that to comfort the hearts of your people if they're troubled, if they're hurting, um, if they're in need. I pray that you'll meet those needs in a mighty, mighty way. You can bring a, a new thing upon the earth, but Lord, help us to keep our minds stayed upon the, even the old things. Christ, uh, from everlasting to everlasting, He is our salvation. And I praise you, Lord, for the Word of God. I praise you for the goodness that you've bestowed upon a mankind thus far. Um, may we be found faithful and not ashamed at the coming, the next coming of Jesus Christ. But until then, strengthen us, Lord, and keep our, help us to keep our minds stayed upon thee, so thou wilt keep us in perfect peace. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Miss Bethany, if you play a song for invitation, if you would like to come up to the altar and bear, uh, give 